Good morning, saints. I praise God for a brand new day. We praise God for his great love. And um, I pray that, you know, it, just reflect back. Reflect back to where you were when we first started this series. Yeah? Just reflect back to where we are now. I think it's absolutely wonderful the journey that God has taken us on. Take time to reflect throughout today and have that conversation with God of, you know, just have how you feel about his leading. Yeah, just have that conversation with him because it's, it's just so special to be able to reflect and uh, on, on the way that he has been leading, the way that he has kept you. And I know that for some of us, the journey has been difficult because we have lost loved ones. Yeah? Um, but remember that we have that wonderful promise that God has given to us that one day he will make all things new yeah and so I pray that that will be a great comfort to you at this time and for those of us who have not been completely restored to health know that it's we're continuing on this journey together yeah let us reflect and give thanks and praise to our God let us pray Dear Father, we are considering this time, Lord, that we've spent in this lockdown. Um, it seems now like a long time, but it was mid-March, and you have kept us, and you have kept us, and you have kept us, and you've encouraged us, and you've strengthened us, and we want to say thank you for that. Thank you for not letting us go. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for guiding our government and for continuing to do that and for helping us to reach across and to encourage each other and to pray for each other and to utter those words of encouragement that have, you know, strengthened us to, to help us to continue um, and, and, you know, to put that pep in our steps. And I thank you because we know that that's what you are all about. And I pray, dear Father, that you will once again speak to us. We love to hear your sweet voice. Allow your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. For we ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, let's go to our text. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. Uh, Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life. no one comes to the Father except through me wonderful words of life and it's absolutely beautiful I think we're coming to realize that no one can save themselves um, you know no one um, and, and we are totally dependent upon God to restore us to guide us and to, to save us yeah? And, and this is what the prayer of David has, has really presented us in an amazing way. And we're going to look at the concluding verses now, verses 14 to 19 um, of Psalm 51. So let me read that uh, for you. Yes. It says, Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my Saviour, and my tongue will sing um, of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offering. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in the burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Oh, it's a beautiful conclusion to a wonderful psalm. And, you know, here in verse, um, uh, we went to verse yes, from 14, verse 14 you see that surfacing again just don't don't we that the gravity of the sin and um, where where um, David says deliver me from the guilt you know guilt is a terrible thing but it's also a wonderful thing because it drives us to um, recognize our need of God he did wrong 
um, and it was a terrible crime that had been committed and um, he's saying to God I need you to um, deliver me from this guilt you know there, there are some in this world that are crushed beneath guilt yes and and it may be I don't know what are the, some of the things that you have done in your life and um, the reality is I know the devil is very good at reminding us of these things and, and he's able to parade us before parade them before us and taunt us with them um, and to make us feel that we are beyond um, saving that God can't do anything for us but um, this text helps us to see that no one is beyond salvation our God is interested in saving all of his children God loves all of his children um, and 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 this is the beauty of it and and so David is saying if you can take this from me you know what I will sing praises so he's not just content to say okay I'm going to it, it was a great thing to testify it's a great thing to teach but he says I'm gonna take it up another level I'm gonna praise you yes um, he's he's looking and he's saying to God you know what um, I will sing praise to you because I just need that assurance that my sins are forgiven, you know? I just need that assurance from you. And maybe through the prophet Nathan, maybe, you know, just that, just you know, quite simply through that reassurance that you, you give to me, that my sins are forgiven. Um, and, and he says something that, again, is most profound. Um, you know, in the, in the time of David, um, as, as a Jew, if you committed a sin, then there was a sacrificial system whereby through the shedding of blood, there were specific animals, um, you know, you'd have um, the lamb or the sheep that you could bring, you know, you could bring the bull, um, you know, he makes reference to that, you know, that you would bring this and then you confess your sins over this animal and then that animal will be killed in your stead yes and, and and it was an amazing thing and this sacrifice actually pointed to the death of Christ yes and and what David is saying here is I uh, yes I could bring a sacrifice um, and, and it could be sacrificed and I could be forgiven but I know that me simply bringing a sacrifice without a change in my heart would be something that you would despise because you want a, a change within my heart you want you want confession you want repentance you want for me to be in a right relationship with you and, and you know sometimes we um, fall into that trap of doing what looks to be the right thing but the heart hasn't changed yeah the heart hasn't changed there's not been that ch that inward change that that purging um away that renewal inside of us and god is saying listen something needs to take place before you find yourself at the altar and David recognizes this and he says, listen, I, I, uh, I, I recognize that it's a broken and a contrite spirit. You know, that sincerity of heart, that brokenness at recognizing that, that my sin hurt you, my heavenly father. Yes, and, and that turning away. And, and as you see that sincerity, that humility, that's something that you cannot resist. And it's something that you, you respond to with forgiveness. And, and it's a beautiful thing because what David is speaking of here is that grace, that wonderful grace that we experience um, from God through the forgiveness of sins. And um, it's absolutely beautiful. I want to I quickly share with you from Romans, um, the book of Romans 20, um, verse 3. And it's that text in verse 23, but also 24. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, and, uh, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came through Christ Jesus. And so as David bows before God, he knows he's not deserving, but because of the love of God, he knows that God will restore him. That is called grace. He is forgiven um, and, and, and God lavishes his grace upon him. It's oh so undeserved, but it's because of the love of God that he's able to be restored. 
and because of that he's able to say um, you know what please prosper Zion yes prosper Jerusalem don't let my sin be a blight to the nation and um, and at that point now then I can actually present sacrifices and burnt offerings and 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 glorify you because you know that my heart is now right I pray that God as you know reveal to you what it means to confess what it means to be repentant and I pray that like David you and I can rejoice in the gift of salvation we can rejoice in this wonderful grace that he lavishes upon us because though our sins are you know you know our garments are you know we're filthy garments yeah our righteousness is filthy garments but because of this grace of God the love of God we are restored we are forgiven we are placed in a right relationship with God next we will go back to Genesis 3 and continue that conversation that God is having with Adam and Eve in that garden let us pray Oh Father, thank you so much for your wonderful words of life that help us to understand that there is grace. There is wonderful, wonderful grace. But yes, we don't deserve it, but you lavish it upon us. You lavish your love upon us as we bow before you and we pour our hearts out before you. You place your arms about us and you restore us, um, Lord, to be the people that you'd have us to be. You brush us down and you you know and and all that can flow from us is praise all that can flow from us is adoration because you know we just can't hold it in we're just so overjoyed for what you are doing so overjoyed for who you are that we just want to shout aloud hallelujah glory and praise be to our God and so thank you for what you are doing and for what you are going to do in our lives continue to allow your Holy Spirit to work in and through us and be glorified for we ask this in Jesus holy and blessed name. Amen. God bless you saints. Go in the joy of the Lord. Have a wonderful day. Bye.